Hi, everyone. I'm Leah, and I'm a product manager for Flutter on the Google team. So I work on the core Flutter framework, which is what powers Flutter Flow. And I'm so excited to be here in New York, my hometown. I live just across the bridge over in Brooklyn. And we rarely have developer events in New York, so it's really exciting to see everyone here today. Yeah. OK, so let's talk a little bit about Flutter. Like I said, Flutter is the framework that powers Flutter Flow, not just the apps that come out of Flutter Flow, but the Flutter Flow app itself. And on Flutter, I work on a couple of different things, but mostly I pay attention to the Apple ecosystem and UX design. So you can imagine, I was really excited when I saw the iPad app for Flutter Flow. Not just because it uses an Apple operating system, but because I know that UX designers love a chance to pull out their fancy Apple pencils and edit all that stuff. So I'm really excited to see what you all build with it. And I have to take a little bit of credit because I was talking to the Flutterflow team before, and they were talking about how quickly they were able to deploy to iPad, and that's all thanks to the Flutter framework. Okay, so if you're familiar with Flutter or if you've seen our talks before, you know that we tie everything back to these core pillars. The first one is that when we're designing Flutter, we want it to enable developers to build beautiful digital experiences. And we need these experiences to be fast and performant on all different devices. Sorry. All good? <laughs> Yeah, so we need them to be fast and performant so that they're usable by the consumers. And we also want our developers to be happy and productive. We want using Flutter to be an enjoyable experience. Finally, we know that Flutter is portable. We want apps that are built with Flutter to run on all different devices. So with Flutter, you have a single code base, but you can deploy to iOS, to Android, to web and desktop and more. And again, that's why they were able to build out that iPad app so quickly. Finally, Flutter itself is completely open source. So you can inspect every line of code in GitHub. You can fork it. You can make changes. You can op open up pull requests. So it's led to this wonderful, vibrant community of lots of contributors. So it's a really exciting time to be working on Flutter or Flutter Flow. We recently announced at Google I.O. that there are now over one million apps in production that have been built with Flutter. Yeah. And there are over five million developers who have used Flutter. Woo! And Stack Overflow releases an annual developer survey. And this year on their survey, Flutter was ahead of all of the other UI frameworks so definitely take a look and dig into the details. OK, so we just watched that great video about Flutter Flow for enterprises. And at Google, I talk to enterprise developers quite a bit. Often, they're starting to build a new app, or maybe they're redesigning an existing app. And usually, one of the first places they start is in a Figma file. They have a design system, and they want to create a library of UI components. Not only does this library help them move faster because they can pull in individual components when they're developing new features, but the designers love it because it ensures brand consistency across all their experiences. So I might be a little bit biased, but I think Flutter is a really great tool for building out these UI component libraries. And I'll tell you why. It's mostly because of Flutter's innovative architecture. So there are a lot of UI frameworks out there. There are kind of like the system UI frameworks, and then there are the cross-platform UI frameworks. But Flutter's architecture is really innovative in this space. Of course, like we mentioned before, you can deploy your app from a single code base to multiple platforms. But what's really special is that the Flutter engine actually talks directly to low-level rendering APIs on the devices you use. So these are like the metal APIs on Apple's devices. Not only does this give us a great performance, like we talked about before, but it also gives developers a blank canvas. Whoops, text got a little weird there. But it gives you a blank canvas to bring your designs to life. 
And a great example of this is the Wondrous app, which is available on the macOS App Store, the iOS App Store, and the Android Play Store. So you can give it a try. OK, so that was the Flutter engine. But the Flutter framework itself also helps developers build out these UI components. The Flutter framework is declarative, which means that it's really easy to read and write and to learn. You basically declare what you want the UI to say, and then Flutter takes care of the rest. Flutter is also composable. So if you've played around with Flutter, you've probably seen that everything is a widget. And widgets are themselves often composed of other widgets. So you have this sort of Russian doll effect where you're nesting different components. And now when you're building out your library of UI components, you have a whole wide range of options inside the Flutter framework. You could go really low level and use something like custom paint, where you define custom painters to actually paint pixels onto the screen. So that's what I use to create this custom line chart that I have here. Or you can look at our design libraries. So we have two design libraries in the framework and many more on pub.dev. In the framework itself, we have Material, which was recently updated to Material 3 to feature the latest and greatest from all the Google design systems. And then we also have Cupertino, which matches Apple's design systems so that you can create apps that feel right at home on Apple devices. And the really cool part about Flutter Flow is that you get all that Flutter goodness plus more because you have this visual editor that you can use to easily build apps so you can go faster and collaborate better. So I'm really excited to be here today because I'm really interested in the design to code space. Again, back to this whole enterprise thing, enterprise developers often start with a Figma file, right? Your designer uh, will hit you up on chat and send you a link to the latest Figma mockup, and maybe your job is to try to translate that into code. But anyone who's done this knows that it can sometimes be a time-consuming process. And things update and change, and you have to change it in multiple places. So let's talk a little bit about what actually goes on in the Figma file itself. Like Flutter, design systems are often composable. You start off at a pretty low level working with textiles, which is composed of different typographies and, and uh, font sizes. And then you have your brand colors, which are often um, just hex values. And you use these fundamental style components to create a larger UI components. So in this case, I have two different versions of a card that I'm going to use in my app. And like I said before, translating these design systems into code can be time consuming. So I'm really interested in this space, and that's why I'm here today, because I think Flutter Flow is a really great opportunity to try to bridge the gap between designers and developers. So I'm going to attempt to do a live demo. Actually, I have one more slide, sorry. Um, uh, one thing that I think was really cool when I was playing around with Flutter Flow over the past couple weeks was that in the enterprise app, I could simply connect my Figma file. So I found this button right away, and I connected my Figma file. And I was able to grab those textiles and those color styles that I showed. And now those are available to use in various parts of the Flutterflow application. So super cool. I know it's not one of the fancy brand new Flutterflow features, but I was pretty impressed by this. OK, now I want to cut over to my laptop for a second. I'll just log in. OK. Cool. All right, and like I said, I'm not a Flutterflow expert. I work at the Google team. I rarely touch Flutterflow. But I think this is a real testament to how easy it is to jump in and start building. So I have my uh, Figma file over here, which, like I said before, has all my different text styles and color styles. I've already connected this to Flutter Flow, so these are now available to me inside my design system. And I want to just quickly start to create this card component. So first, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to click Create a New Component. And I can go to Card Views. And like I said before, we're building on top of the Flutter greatness. 
So many of these uh, components are just widgets that come available in the framework itself, or the Flutterflow team has built on top of the framework to create even more widgets for you. So I'll use my theme, and let me give this a name. Create this, let's make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. And now I'm gonna come over here, and I have all my textiles available from my Figma file. So I can change it to, let's say, headline large, and then I'm gonna change this to title large. And I can go ahead and add a border like we had in our Figma file. So I'll make this a border width of two. And here you can see all my different colors from my design system. So I'll add that in. Now I have my border. And finally, I want to add a component that I've already created. Because like we said before, design systems are composable. So I have this seasons component. I'm just gonna drag and drop it. And let's play around with the layout for a second. Let's change the spacing here so that we space between. And now we're all set. So I made a lot of progress on translating from Figma to Flutter in just, I don't know, 30 seconds? How long was that? Yeah. And what's great is this is all you know in my component library. Now I can use it in other places in my app. So let me come over to my home page where I started. And now I can go and find all the components I've created. So I'll just drag and drop this one wherever I need it in my app. And I think I forgot to put a column widget, so it's a little funky. But yeah, it's super easy to get started and just go from, whoop. That's all right, we can go back to the slides. <laughs> And it's super easy to go from uh, Figma to Flutterflow. And I think this is super exciting because this is a space that's evolving rapidly. So I'm really excited to see designers start to get into Flutterflow themselves and bridge this gap. Um, that's basically all I had to say today, but I do wanna give a quick shout out to my Flutter New York City people. If you're local to New York City and you want to join further meetup groups, we have a bunch of folks from the community here and you can sign up at flutter.nyc. So I hope to see you there. Thank <laughs> you.